working on today, the old carriage. Good look at old carriage here. It's old hurdle carriage, as we said before. Just more or less turned this thing into a whole freaking sawmill. We had an old mill that burnt down and we rebuilt. We bought ourselves a hurdle, picked it up in the air, made a few adjustments to it, and built around it. This thing actually comes on a trailer. You can actually see the lights on the back of it somewhere. See, this whole deal right here would just be pulled on a semi truck. You park it in the woods, plant your feet down, and saw it's a hell of a company. And they make probably, in my opinion, one of the best carriages bang for your buck. Today, what we're working on is the carriage itself. We're going to A, we're going to sharpen these bottom dogs. You can see where they're rounded. Got some roundness that needs to be square on both sides. We're also going to adjust our dogs. Our front dog is sticking out probably a quarter inch, which we can adjust it right in here. Oh Lord, he's made it here. This jam nut's loose. So that's probably the culprit. You just want to get the space the same yeah, at all of them. God, they're, they're invading us, Charlie. There's two of them now. What do you think about welding a piece? You think it's up a piece right on top of this. This? Yeah. Weld another piece of channel on top. I believe it's better to take it off this and put it out there. I've been doing pretty good at taking a 16 foot 2 inch and get over there and jam it that kitchen. So you see we had a flat bar that went all the way down. Over time it's broken off so when the slabs come off it'll sit on top of this. You drop it, drop it. just makes a disaster. So we're to fix that too. Here and four here to be about right, yeah. There ain't nothing right here that's supposed to sit. Well, probably a four there would be all you need. I'm not having much of that. Except occasionally a two inch, and it ain't good at a slab most time. Another time it's a two inch fleet, 16 foot only. Go over there and get that uh, sticker. You think a four inch would stand up right there? Bleeding all the air out of it. Want a sip of that? A sawmill water. Anytime you get thirsty, you just come over here, open the valve, port your cup underneath it, and it really gets you attached to the mill a little further. We're going to kick all the slack on these head blocks and then pull it up one time. First, I want to get that front dog back up about like that. Okay. So y'all get it first. Now, how do you take the slack out the head block? These two nuts right here. Just so tighten you, those. You can't just do one all the way. you got to about bring them up equally. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. If you want to stay in, we'll make all the head blocks line. All right. See the difference. Our lock nuts evidently came Damn. loose, which allowed the cylinder to turn and just continue to tighten itself up. It's right against the cup or the yoke, or whatever you want to call it, the eyelet, and onto the shaft where it needs to be something like this, which is about seven eighths of an inch off, but we'll measure to be exact. And all four of them will be like this right here, which will have the dog sticking out the same. You can kind of get an idea here how far these three are, and then come to this one. I mean, it's probably half inch, three quarters of an inch. Probably like an inch and a sixteenth inch actually goes on the shaft itself. I'm thinking I get some Chanel locks and uh, get it in there a little tighter. We'll turn on some elevator music or something because this is probably gonna take a minute. But that toolbox of his, he likes to just, you know, almost like your wife does the dishwasher, just throws the shit in there. We're talking about the organized toolbox person. Your or, your what? My organized toolbox. No. <laughs> I think the channel lock. Oh, nice. That one's about 11 This does not look like it's 11 Half. Five eight. Still five eight. Because the nut's turning with it. The nut don't matter, it's just a lock nut. I thought that's oh, what you were measuring no, off of. Oh, I yeah. see what you're saying. Yeah. Man. I'm gonna say that is dead nuts. Let me check it one more time. I'm gonna allow Phil to check this and just tell me how how far off we are. I'm a 30 second off. 30 seconds. Are you gonna come check this or you trust me? 
Are you gonna set it onto it? It's gonna set his uh I guess the head blocks at two inch, which would realistically be the head blocks be two inches from where the saw goes into the log. He's cut a lot of two inches lately, so that's just a good good thing to check. Say that is roughly nine sixteenths. That first and second dog both measure nine sixteenths. Well, I can tell what it wasn't just two and it was a crack right here. Okay, yeah, stop. I'll lock it down real quick. Let me see. Checking the slack in the chain. That one's even tighter than that one. That one's loosened so far. That one's good. This is the only one that feels kind of loose. Just to the widest part of the tip. Well, well see, you're doing the back part of your thing. Watch this. Two adjuster bolts and all this does is tighten the chains that control your head blocks. Out of all four of my head blocks, it's the only one that's got just a little too much slack. This is actually the head block that the system reads off of. You got a little probe underneath this piece of angle that's protecting it. See our wires coming off of it. It's not like um, anything too technical, it's just punching your own sizes. I should show it to you. So you got right here on each of these buttons, so when you go to set, press enter stack, and each of them buttons is what those are. So I could press two right there and cut a two inch can, or eight inch can, or six inch can, or four inch can, 10, 12, etc. So it's like you still choose what you cut. There's no optimizers what I'm getting to. You don't need those real saw in my opinion. Let's get this chain adjusted. But with this being the loosest chain and the one that reads, it's pretty critical that this one is dead nuts every time got a jam nut on it so we'll take both the jam nuts oh thought the damn stud was spinning there for a second need another inch and eighth inch so actually these studs all they do is they push down onto the chain so the further down they are the stiffer it keeps the chain i'm assuming it's probably some sort of plastic material or something that just rubs right against it or maybe it's just to the sprocket i don't really know so if you tighten this nut it should tighten our chain we'll find out tighten loosen we're gonna figure it out uh, you want to impact the socket uh, just keep going until it gets as tight as the other chains but um he said just make sure we do like a quarter turn at a time on each one Charlie's grabbing us a ratchet. That way I can do a quarter turn on one, make sure I do a quarter turn on the other. I could have used a wrench, just a bad angle. Better safe than sorry. I think this thing is going back and forth, you know, three to four days a week, all day long. So it's just announced that there's gonna be some bolts that come loose or, you know, just some trouble. But that's what Fridays and Fridays, maintenance days, Saturdays are for, you know, just keeping this stuff top notch because a lot of sawmills have shut down from strictly just not working on their mill. They just get a little too, um, I don't know, just a little too spoiled or something. Maybe the market's too good. They're making too much money. They're just worried about sawing. Ain't worried about no sort of maintenance. And uh, it usually bites them in the ass. Same feature, you got to make sure that it's taken well care of. He let me down, boys and girls. He, he shouldn't need to breathe an extension. He knew that he needed that. As soon as he walked over here, first world on the extension. Thanks, sir, Charlie. Mm -hmm. 
You're a gentleman and a scholar. Alright, so we'll start off with a quarter turn on each. Quarter turn on that one. A little past quarter. Go another quarter. A quarter on this one. If anything, that's a little tighter than the other one. Well, it's definitely tighter. Check the first one and see how it feels compared to this one. Like I said, you want this one to be a little bit tighter. Let's leave it like that. It might loosen a little bit. Main thing is, like I said before, you got your probe that runs to your set works. This one's probably as loose as that one was. Yeah, we'll tighten it while we can. So it's very critical that this one reads right. Okay, because you know, whenever you press whatever set you're gonna press, it's going off this head block. If this head block's loose, might have you out a quarter to a half inch. Maybe not a half. But... He was, when I was measuring him, he was about an eighth different from one to the other. Yeah, so eighth is a lot because then it's got to go through a planer. And your planer guy bitches because it's a little thick. You got to listen to that shit. So, you know, it all starts here. So we're going to go and tighten that one too. And then we'll make way to our log turner and mess it out a little bit. Lock this one down. What size saw is this? 50 inch. 50 inch? 50 inch. Two and a half. We don't ever hammer our saws. I didn't know that. Two and a half what? Two and a half seven gauge five six. Two and a half seven gauge five sixteen. You got a sawyer that knows what he's doing. You don't have to hammer your sawing. If your sawmill is any good, you don't have to hammer your saw, he says. I'm sure some of you would argue that. What kind of saw is that? That's a BH thing. BH thing. Two and a half. It's two and a half by seven. BH thing, seven. Two and a half. It's not an F style. It's two and a half style. Uh, I don't understand all bits. They can shed the dust better than a Simon Short. You can do a Simon Short. Pulls easier. In the fast sawing days, Simon Short was even more desired, but bigger logs, the, the standoff to saw this stuff. Now what's the purpose of hammering a saw? Just well, repairing it? Well, yeah, it's got too much tension in it, not enough. It's either too stiff or too limber, but you know, every time you run a saw hot, it, kind of, it messes up the tension. If you guys, your meal's any good and your saw's any good, you, I ain't saying you, you never got to hammer a saw, but it ain't something you do every week. Yeah. The man toting a saw to get a hammer every week, you either saw you ain't no good or the meal ain't no good, one or the other. Too much loose smoke. Yeah. Well, I mean, they don't know how to set a guide, a man don't know how to file a saw or what have you. And uh, filing saw is probably the most critical thing you do throughout the week, ain't it? As far as well, anybody, you got to keep a sharp saw, it don't cut right. A dull saw don't cut right. Yeah. You keep it square too, you don't square the better. Yeah. So you see under a seat, he keeps all, he got all nothing but bits and shanks. So he's constantly throughout the day checking these saw teeth. Every break, check them. Hit a nail, change them out. What valve does that control? Is that just two head blocks? You have to run it for the fit there. Okay, gotcha. The head scrag operator. What you need, Steve? Hey, I can't even get that so I can see. That little right there. That little one? That little one right there. You're going to have to wait a minute. All right, here. Steve's our head scrag operator. <laughs> He's going to fix it. How you going to fix it? Put your lock pad on the end of it. What happened to the little end of it? How long you been saw milling, Steve? Oh, probably about 15 years. But you're in the military before that for a while too, wasn't you? Five. Hell yeah. Did you work? What, did you only work at this sawmill or another sawmill as well? I yeah. told him everything he knows. And he's a he's pretty important role now. He runs that scrag up there. He's the first operator here to run it, and he's doing a hell of a job on it. Got to keep people it. like Steve around here, man. You get yourself a good working individual. You treat them with respect. You know, you know they're hard to come by. That's Very right. hard to come by. That's right. You notice it's usually older gentlemen because they're not <laughs> the younger generation. Well, y'all looking looking mighty soft these yeah, days. Soft. Yeah. Can't handle them. Well, we got here. Tommy has noticed a high. 
Yeah. Hydraulic leak. He's located it at this valve. Charlie's thing's got four set screws in it. And Charlie's just tightening all those down. If not, if that don't fix it, we'll have to take it off put a new O-ring on the bottom. They look pretty Both tight. Okay, so. This is constant every week battle. Let me get everybody out the way, crank this thing up for one second, just make sure we stop the leak. top is just how far your head blocks are from the saw and she's just backing it up just to make room for other things at the moment but so he made a six inch set so when he presses his set button that head block automatically goes to six inches we'll measure it just to double check six and a sixteenth Six and a sixteenth. So far, so good. Six and a sixteenth. Six and a heavy sixteenth. This six and a sixteenth. And we'll lock everything out. We'll turn the air off. When we say lock out, we're not just hitting the switch. I mean, there's like multiple things you've got to lock out. You gotta lock your air out. You gotta lock your breaker box off. You want no source of power, no source of air, no source of jack shit going to whatever you're working on. Because if something was to happen and this thing get moved in there or somebody go in there and mess with it, it'd kill you. You see, a lot of people died at sawmills, so it's super important to keep it extra safe. So now that we got our head block situation figured out, everything is lined up on a dime. Maybe not by a piano wire, but it's close enough for old Southern boy. Now we're gonna sharpen these dogs. A lot of roundness to them. You don't want no sort of roundness. You want this sap sucker to be absolutely straight. The bottom is very bad, and I'll show a newer one here in a second. You want that face to be square, and you want your 45 or whatever angle that is to be square as well to a point. That way it grabs a lot sharper to point, the better it grabs a lot. Nothing too extravagant. There ain't no special tool for this. Just a regular old grinder. Hand in the shop just to get a grinder to sharpen those dogs. But as I'm walking by here, I need to put these up. Really no need to be out here in the weather. This is what a new one will look like. See how much higher that is up compared to what we're about to sharpen. Nice and flat, nice and flat. Good point to it. Uh, we probably should go ahead and replace them. But, you know, we'll get a few more months out of them. These are actually upgraded from the original dogs that came with the carriage. The original ones did not have these gussets on it and uh, didn't take too much. You'd snap this off because it's all just welded together. But now they've added gussets, which I did go to our dogs and have had added gussets to the original. What's up, What's up big time? Much. Charlie's been kind enough to bring us his Milwaukee grinder. He's actually doing it right now. He's got the Milwaukee battery on there, not the DeWalt proud of them. We're going to sharpen these bad boys up. They're rounded as a belly. All there is to it just more or less took that curve out of it and got it nice and straight so it's good and sharp almost like a blade all the way across the top. We'll do that to the other three and our carriage maintenance will be done so. I'm gonna end it on that note. All done in my carriage area. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like, hit that subscribe for the ones that have already been subscribed and continue to follow along. I sure do appreciate y'all. God bless, keep on keeping on, and I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. Peace.